Hey y'all, Data Guy here. And today I have a video for you where I'm going to be going over a bit of an update to a previous video I made on Apache Hootie and showing you how to use Apache Hootie as your open source data relay platform in production. So here what I'm gonna show you is essentially a data pipeline that's going to take from a Postgres source, take some data, and then update a uh, Trino database, so Presto, C Apache Presto um, SQL, and then we're going to read that into that database in the Hootie format, which is going to make it really easy for us to then use the Trino CLI to query our Hootie data um, and access it in a really quick manner. So really showcasing how you, well, you know, once your data is in that Hootie format, it becomes really easy to query um, and makes it really easy for those downstream use cases of you know big data analytics, pulling data from that data lake. Um, so without further ado, let's get into it. So the first thing we're going to need to do is just set up our environment. So make sure you have Java 8 and Hadoop installed um, and just set your Java home to wherever you want to reference uh, your Java file app when you're using it. Same thing with the Hadoop home, reference Hadoop home, path to Hadoop, and then also just export this path as well. Uh, this will just help us with some of the rails we'll need for actually running uh, this project. Um, and then the next thing we're going to do is download Apache Hootie from the Apache Hootie website. Um, so go here, go to get started, latest releases, um, and then we will go to download our Spark bundle. So just click here, go to the Maven repository, download it, um, and then I'll meet you back in local development. Sorry, actually go to this download link and then click and download this Apache Hootie 1.0 beta source release. So, sorry quick adjustment there, make sure you don't get screwed up like I did. So now we won't actually need to have Apache Hoot or do any kind of install command. Essentially what you want to do is just have our packages available because then what we're going to use is have the Hootie dependencies packages for Spark and then we're actually going to query it through Spark. So instead of thinking of Hootie as like something that's running in the background, what we're really doing it is using Hootie as the format for the end results of the data that we're gonna process through Spark from coming from that Postgres source. So then our next step is we're also going to set up a local Postgres installation just to have a dummy database here. Um, and then I'm just gonna run this. Um, I'm gonna start up Docker and then rerun this command. So now got Docker running. This is gonna spin up and run just a local Postgres database that we're then gonna populate with just some dummy data that we're then gonna pull down. So now what we're gonna do is open up our Postgres database and just create a SAMPI dummy database. And first we're also going to install psql, so I can do that. So there we go. And one second, let me figure this out. So just go to Docker, open up the exec for your uh, container, and then go in here into Postgres. It's use that exact same command, so just used. Um, but yeah, just make sure you're not running it from your actual local machine. And then what we'll do is just create a quick temporary table. So here we just got you know some different users, Alice, Bob, Charlie, um, inserting some dummy data for them just to verify um, that, and let's verify that it actually was populated. So select all from users. And here you can see our timestamp, email, and their username. Awesome. So we have our dummy data that we're ready to work with. So now what we'll do so next, we're gonna go out of here and go back to our local machine and then start downloading and installing Trino. Um, so there's a couple different wget commands you can use here, so I'm just gonna run those. Um, actually, I'm not, I'm just gonna go to the website and download it manually. So download Trino server, download Trino here. Um, and how do we wanna run? So we're gonna use the Trino Docker image that I didn't know existed. Um, so going back to our local command line interface, Trino, what we're gonna do is Pull, Trino DB, Trino, and this is just a query engine that we're going to be using to actually query those Hootie, ta Hootie tables we're going to create. Um, so here, just going to download it. It's kind of a beefy one, so I'll pause this for a second. Now, we're going to need to create a directory to then store a series of Trino files that are, we're going to need to configure it to be able to use with Apache Hootie. Um, so here, first we're going to make directory Trino config, and then we are going to open this directory. So first, let me... See this? Okay, cool. So we're gonna open a new window here and then open that file we just created. So zoom in, open, and then here we have our Trino config file. And within here, we're going to create a few different files. So 
Yes, I do trust those authors. Hopefully the good folks at Trino don't screw me over. Um, and then what we'll do is create our nodes.property file first. So here, node.properties. This is just going to tell us where our data is going to live for Trino machine. We're also going to need to create a Java virtual, a Java virtual machine configuration file. So gvm.config and then add all these fun packages um, into there. So just configuration how Trino is gonna run. I won't pretend to know what a lot of these do, but I just know that they are needed. Um, and then config.properties here. And then copy this code in here, save it again. And then we'll also do create, okay, so within catalog, um, Okay, yeah, so this is, okay, so here we're gonna create a new file, catalog, or new folder, so catalog slash hoodie dot properties. So here, this is where we're actually going to define that hoodie connector. So Hive Metastore URI, so we're gonna create a local Hive Metastore for actually storing it, but here are hoodie properties, connector name is hoodie, Hive Metastore URI is localhost 9083, um, and then, We've already created a catalog, or we've already created a catalog directory, so not an issue there for our Hootie properties. And then what we'll need to do is start our Trino container. So we've got our Trino Docker image downloaded. So let's see if this is going to work. Fingers crossed. Boom. All right. So now double check that we have our Trino container running. So it looks like it's starting right now. If it's exited, so one sec. All right. So the way we got to fix this. Um, is to allow our Docker container to actually be able to access our Trino directory. So back out into this Trino directory. Um, and then, wait, let's see. LS, um, yeah, so let's do this. So Trino chmod, uh, what am I doing here? There we go. Uh, and then we are going to copy this code. chmod Trino, let's do just this. Awesome, okay. <clears throat> so basically what this will do is make this directory readable, writable, and executable by all users. So quick fix for your local machine, but probably don't use this in a production setting. Just kind of wanted to get around this error as quickly as possible. And of course, I need to also delete my Docker container that's already named tree now because you can't have a Docker container recreated with the same name. So quick delete there, rerun this command, and hopefully this works this time. So let's go over to our Docker desktop and we have a similar issue so one second and boom goes the dynamite so the only thing i had needed to do is just update to use this new command that allows it to inherit those permissions so reference that trina dot uh, slash data file that i also enable permissions to and then you're also going to want to remove um there is this uh, one of the file the xx use bias locking line within this jvm config delete that because you won't be able to use it um, because it was deprecated in an earlier version and, and I hadn't uh, updated that for it. So now we have our Trino database all set up and running. Um, so fantastic. If we actually go to localhost 8080 or 8080, somewhere to Airflow, we should actually see it. So let's just check in there. Awesome. So we have our Trino login there. So cluster overview. Um, and now we can integrate Hootie with Trino. So now what we're going to do is pull and run a Hive Metastore. So this is going to start a Hive Metastore container that Trino will then use. Um, so make sure there's no port conflicts here. Okay, cool, there's no there. And so now we're going to Docker run uh, and run a Hive Metastore on port 9083. So here, awesome, let's see. So make sure you specify a version of Hive, not just latest, or you will get repeated failures like me and smash your head into a table. Um, so yeah, this is just going to download Hive, which we're then going to use to store our data. And then we're gonna use Trino as the query engine to actually query it. Um, and we're gonna store it in that Apache Hootie format. Um, so now we have it all downloaded. Um, now let's actually get it up and running. So one second. So once you have this Hadoop Hive uh, Metastore up and running, so this is where we're actually just gonna be storing um, that unstructured data, it is time to put it all together and make a Spark script that's going to take our uh, data from Postgres and dump it in that, uh, in that Hadoop Hive Metastore, um, but in the Apache Hootie format. 
So I already have a Spark session running, um, just because I have PySpark installed locally, but if you need a command to actually run Spark on Docker, you can use this, just Docker run, pull Spark Hootie down. Um, and so this is just going to pull it down for me. Um, and yeah, then we can go and start creating our Spark script. So here, just going to open the folder. I was or just open my data guy repo. So go to desktop. Wow, data guy repos, and then where's the cool one? Spark scripts. Sweet. And so here we'll create a new file. Call this incremental foodie upload dot i, and. Then we can start building our Spark script. So here we're just going to import from PySpark SQL Spark session. Don't need to actually import anything relevant to Hootie because, as you'll see, when we initialize the Spark session and the processes later, we're going to do that uh, with by you know initiating the session along with sites and Hootie resources. Um, and so basically, when you're creating the Spark session within the script, that's when you provide it with the necessary libraries to run Hootie um, and do all that fun stuff. So first thing we'll do in the actual script is just define a Spark Session Builder, um, just using the Spark Session Builder, so call it Hootie Postgres Ingestion, it's just importing that as Spark Serializer to allow us to create serialized workflows, just essentially sequential workflows. Then we're going to assign our Postgres URL to the local container that we have running on Docker. So here, JDBC Postgres SQL um, and then localhost 543.2 give it the properties, just the same properties you created with. Obviously, don't use a hard-coded password in production, but you know this is just the default Postgres password, no real risk here. Um, so just have those properties for authenticating in. And then what we will do is create a data frame, read uh, JDBC from our table user. So use that Postgres URL, take the table that we created, the dummy table we created earlier, uh, read that table, read any properties of it, and then store them as a data frame. Then the way to convert it into Hootie is actually really simple. All you'll do is just use data frame, write format, org, Apache, dot Hootie. And then here you have the option to use these different Hootie specific fields. So record key, partition path, timestamps, it's gonna partition our data to make it easier and more cost efficient to search. Pre-combined fields, so pre-combining the timestamp field uh, to create data sources, unique IDs, uh, using the, creating a Hootie table name, using Hootie users. Um, upsert, so it's going to just add to an existing database because remember the goal here is incremental data uploads. So we're just going to upsert that data um, into our data frame or into our, uh, uh, sorry, Hootie database, and then here, which is really just a local file store that we're managing what to do. Um, so in practice, you probably wouldn't be using a local file store. You'd probably be using something like S3, like a, uh, Amazon Cloud Storage, or sorry, not Azure Cloud Storage, Google Cloud Storage, um, whatever your flavor of container storage is. But I wanted to create a demo that you know you can run on any local machine um, because you shouldn't need to have to create a cloud account because that is uh, pre uh, impossible for some people. And then to have this run every 15, 20 minutes, you can either just create like a super simple cron schedule, but so that would be something like this. Um, and then here, so this is just, you know, hey, Apache, a simple cron job. What you'd probably wanna do, um, and I have multiple videos on this and how to orchestrate your Spark jobs with Airflow, but take this Spark script and just have it be triggered by Airflow on a regular basis every 15 to 20 minutes. Um, but I'll direct you to my video on how to do that for more in-depth instructions because that's a whole kind of other uh, set of things. And then for querying the data, um, what you can do is just use the beeline command. Um, so here we have this uh, Hive command line interface for interacting with Hive server. Actually, one sec, that's not what I want to use. I want to use Trino. So we're using Trino as our execution engine. I completely forgot. Um, so here we have catalog hootie, um, and sorry, not that one. So running our Trina database, and even though I get a bunch of errors, this is going to then create that Trino query engine that'll then allow me to query my uh, my actual data, uh, my hootie data. Um, and so obviously the power of this isn't really gonna be on display, just querying those three lines. But really for large data sets, the reason why you'd wanna use something like Apache Hootie is, hey, you can have all these files stored wherever um, you want, 
query it just using something like normal SQL. Um, so really easy. So I mean, obviously, again, small database, only three files. So it's not really that interesting in terms of the speed here. But when you get to you know 100,000 rows, many different files, what Hootie provides here is a really easy way to query across you know all those millions of different data sets that you're creating from all your different object storage. Uh, in real time. So when you need them in for real time analytics, you know, in the data lake motion, you need to do your processing when you want to use it for analytics. This makes it much easier, much faster, much more cost effective. So I hope you have uh, enjoyed this video um, and I hope you've learned a lot from it and have a great rest of your day. Data guy out.